everyone. Uh, just making a small video on like what I do day to day with the gerbils when they wake up. So the first thing I usually do is I unbury their food from the bedding, which it's mostly unburied, and I feed them. Right now they have a lot of food, so they're okay. And I feed them a mix of Higgins Sunburst Gourmet one and I'm being covered. And I feed them a pellet that's young rat and mouse food and that's oxbow brand it's like oxbow essentials um, and that's for the protein because the sunburst blend doesn't have enough protein to make them you know healthy and stable usually uh, I will also take this is very deep bedding it may look shallow to the angle you're at but it is roughly four inches deep on this side, eight inches deep on the right side. And then I have this barrier and that keeps the sides like separate so it doesn't just even out when they decide to bury everything. And then I usually unbury their little hides. There you go. Boop. And I'll make sure that their little house here is set up and you know has enough bedding that they have sticks to chew on. Chews are very important. I'll check their water, their food. And then I check on them usually. But typically by the time I pour the food into their bowl here, which I use a bowl, a lot of people do not use a bowl because sometimes you can get territorial problems with gerbils if you feed them in a bowl. But I like feeding them in a bowl because then I can see how much they've been eating and how much they've been hoarding. And sometimes even when I do feed them in the bowl, when I clean this area out, like every month roughly, I will find little piles of their food that they've eaten in the corners. And it's kind of funny. Because you'll find like a little mound. <laughs> a mound of shells. Hello. And right now they're going to check me out a little bit because they're like, oh, do you have something for me? Which I do. I hand them things. You come out? Oh, yep, he took it. <laughs> and they're very friendly. They're not attacking me or anything. And this is, you know, after quite a, about a year of having them. But these guys, they wouldn't like come out and come up to me like this for a good few months when I first got them. So it's very, they're a lot more friendly than they used to be. There you go, bud. Okay. And another thing I wanted to address is I see a lot of people like getting gerbils, but they're getting them with the wrong enclosures. So these guys are in a big, a big, big tank. So this is all glass. And I see a lot of people buying the uh, enclosures, but they're like wood on the inside. They will chew through that. Do not get anything with wood on the inside unless it's all covered by like plexiglass or this is just a glass tank essentially what we're in here um they will chew through anything that's not glass uh including so these big tanks they have like a plastic edge you can kind of see right here they'll chew that if you make your bedding too high they'll grab onto it and they'll chew it off because i had that happen with this tank so it's missing like some of the inner black plastic there. But that's okay if you catch it because it's generally not a problem. Just have to be careful. Um, but I see a lot of people getting like the wrong enclosure. They also have a problem with the, with the wood. If it has like a wood bottom or something, when they go to the bathroom, they have a lot of urates. So they're like mice. You're going to smell it. And wood, unfortunately, soaks that up. So you're going to like have a very stinky enclosure in a house very quickly. So make sure any exposed wood is like covered with glass or some sort of plastic to where there's no edges that they can get their teeth around. If there's any sort of edge, they will chew it. Be very aware. These guys, they have teeth <laughs> and they use them well. Oh, and they took the stick sometime when I was talking. <laughs> They're huge chewers, so you have to be really aware of that. Like this hide, 
when you buy them hides, don't get anything plastic. Don't get anything wood unless you want to be buying a new one every, like, two weeks. Otherwise, they'll eat through it. So this one is ceramic, actually. So this is ceramic, which is kind of like glass, essentially. Or I guess, like, clay, but heated is what it is. It's not... It's a glass-like texture now, so they can't just chew through it. Um, Got to keep them busy with chews, unless you want them eating everything else in your tank. So these dividers I have, these cardboard. I change this, like, twice a week sometimes, because they will, you know, they'll chew right through it. <laughs> uh, so they'll chew those up eventually. Same with their box. I have to give them a new hide every like week or two sometimes unless they really like it like this one's lasted a while it used to be like a full box shape this is like two weeks after i first put it in but they've really liked it so they haven't actually chewed it up too badly but i think that's pretty obvious what they have chewed and what they have not chewed <laughs> um but yeah, that's that's some of the problems I'm seeing around when people are getting gerbils. Or they'll get them and they'll put them in these cages with, like, the wire. But just the wire with, like, that kind of short plasticky bottom. Like, that's not, no. That's not enough room for these guys. Even this 40-gallon tank, I want to upgrade this. Because, like, look at how big these guys are. They're not, they're not little. Come here, buddy. I just want to borrow you. Come here. Oh, now he's in a hole. Well, you can tell how large they are. They're not... They're not small. And this is like a standard size, like, cat bowl. That you might feed your kitty cat with. And, like, they can kind of both fit in this bowl and fill up the entire thing. So it's not like... You know, they're not small. They're a lot larger than some animals. Um, I would say they're equivalent to maybe, well, they're slightly smaller than a Syrian hamster, I would say. They're not as huge as those, but they're definitely getting there, like, pretty close. Maybe two-thirds the size of a Syrian per gerbil. So it's not like a mouse where it's, like, little, little, and you can fit, like, three or four in an enclosure like this, but females, um... Yeah, a 40 gallon, I would only do two. I would not go any smaller than a 40 gallon breeder size tank, which is what this is that I have them in. Or just a standard 40 gallon if you give them like a lot of space to like crawl over things and, you know, more of that. Um, another mistake I'm seeing a lot of when people getting are getting gerbils is they'll be like, oh, I just want one. Problem is, they're sold in pairs, or people will buy like three or like four, or any multiples more than two. <laughs> Generally, those are unstable, especially groups of three are very unstable. So you want to just stick to two. Unless it's sold in a single, then just get that one and see eventually if you can bond it to another single. But always be sure you get the same sex of the pair. Otherwise, you'll have, like, loads and loads and loads of babies. So, what I did when I first got these two boys is I made sure that they were the same sex by putting them in a jar. And I, like, looked on the bottom and checked because the males, obviously, are males and the females look very different. Uh, but it was easy for these guys because you get them about roughly six months old and you can see the sex characteristics that mark them as male or female. These guys, it was pretty easy. Um, and they tamed down in, like, three months. They stopped kind of chewing on me. But they're like toddlers. They will put anything in their mouth to figure out what it is. So it's not aggression, nothing like that. But a lot of times you have to give them several months before they want to hang out with you. Hi, hey, buddy. No. Oh, he licked me. <laughs> That's another thing. They'll lick you if you have, like, salt or anything on your fingers that smells good. Or they'll, like, try to chew on you. So if you use, like, scented soaps that smell like fruit, 
they'll sometimes chew on you because they're like, oh, are you fruit, <laughs> you know? Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi. But generally, they're very, very active and, you know, they're very independent critters. So they're not always like, they'll come check you out, but they're not focused on you at all. They're very much... Like, if you hold out your hand, they might come check you out, but they're really not interested in being held or anything like that. So, I guess that's part of the other mistakes, is I see people trying to hold them and handle them a lot when they first get them, but that just, it'll freak them out a little more than anything. Like, even now, I don't hold them too much, because they just kind of, I can go, like, say hi, but they kind of go off on their own. But they're not afraid of me at all because I didn't try to like force them to be held or anything like that. They're just like, eh, I want to go off and do my own thing, you know. So if I do this, he'll come over and see what I'm doing. It's like, oh, you're digging? Okay, I'm going to dig too. So they're very social. They want a friend. If they're alone, they kind of get lonely. Um, there's certain cases where keeping one gerbil is a really good idea. So a gerbil that has had previous declanning incidents, those ones might be better in a single, but these guys, I got them, these are brothers. They haven't had a single problem. They had a little scuffle the other night, but that was over. I think what happened is they both wanted to fit in the same hide and they couldn't both fit and somebody got mad and they scuffled. But it all worked out. They're back to being buddies. But, you know, you just got to watch and make sure. If you see anything off, intervene. Just kind of be like, guys, chill. <laughs> Take out. And if you see anything, like, where they're starting to maybe show signs of territorialness, what you do is you take out all the things they could feel territorial over. So I removed their hides. I removed this. I removed the divider. And I evened out the space. The only thing they had was obviously their water. And then I put their food just kind of scattered. Resolved it very quickly. They haven't had a problem. I think it was just a minor little disagreement, as they sometimes have in nature. Naturally, they might have uh, disagreements. But generally, it works out very easily with gerbils. Um, you just have to really watch and make sure. That after these disagreements, I watched them for several hours after, and eventually they were grooming each other, and they were fine. It's just good to be watchful for these things and make sure that they are getting along. <laughs> As you can see, they're burying everything. That's what they do. They bury. They are a critter that buries their things. Hey, buddy. And I do want to mention... Um, if a gerbil does pass away from not necessarily fighting, it might have not even been a fight. It could be from anything, really. If a gerbil passes away in your cage or, like, container where you keep them, you may find that the other gerbil in the enclosure decides to eat the dead gerbil. And that might indicate to some that one attacked the other, but that's not the case. Gerbils, as a survival tactic, even in the wilds, this is very common, even in mice and other rodents, these guys live in social groups of, you know, several. So as a survival tactic, when one dies in the burrow, they'll eat the other one in that burrow so that wild predators don't smell like dead animal gerbil and try to like, oh, I'm going to go eat this, eat this thing. So what they'll do is they'll eat the deceased one to get rid of the scent to dissuade predators, basically. They don't want that scent in their burrow to like attract anything like snakes um, and other predators that they live around. Hi, baby. What you doing? Okay, I gave him a treat. He's fine. He's very happy over there.
see if I can get him to come over. Okay, he's gonna take a treat. There he goes. <laughs> yep. So if you see one and one passes away and it's like half eaten or something, that's not anything you did wrong. They didn't kill each other. They probably didn't kill each other. Unless you've seen fighting recently. Um, it's, you know, just the way of nature. That's how they do things. It's very normal. I've seen it a lot in mice where they cannibalize the other mice when they pass away or a mama has a bunch of babies um, and they get stressed. Sometimes they'll kill and eat the babies. I think that also happens in gerbils on occasion, just not as often as maybe mice and other critters, but it does happen. So be aware of that. Hopefully this video was helpful to somebody and enjoyable to watch. <laughs> oh my goodness. See if I can get her to, to come up. And there's their water. Obviously they've chewed on it, but. Oh, yep, he's saying hi now. <laughs> Hoppy, what are you doing? What are you doing, Hoppy? Hi. Hi, yes. I know. You're the star. You're the star of the show. And I don't think I got it on camera, but you'll see them kind of like drag their body like along the ground sometimes. Kind of like with their legs back and they'll kind of drag. And that, you kind of saw it with him there. That's because they have their oil gland on their belly, on their tummy. So that's what that dark spot is. There's it's their oil and their pheromone gland. So that's how they like tell other gerbils that that's their territory. Just ignore the flying bedding. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> They're just a joy to watch, honestly. I love these guys. They're so great. But remember, keep them in pairs, no more than two. Unless they're sold in a single, then you can try to bond them to another gerbil with a split cage method, which I'm not going to talk anything about that because I've never done it. So why would I talk about something I haven't done? Um, hi, baby. Yeah. Oh, you lost your bedding. Oh, my goodness. There. But yeah, that's a little about them. A little bit more information. Hopefully you find it great and helpful and nice. And yeah, so do enjoy. That you can kind of see that dark spot on his tummy. That's the oil gland right there at the kind of the tummy area. And Hoppy and Thomas wish you a very good day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha